So you got a bad sore throat. Does that mean that you have tonsillitis? Does that mean that you need a tonsil surgery? Seems like a simple question, simple answers. But if there is anything that my last few years have taught me is that it's not always so. Today we're talking about frequent sore throats, tonsillitis, infections, and at what point you need to talk about going ahead and removing your tonsils, what are the risks and everything else in that realm. If this is something that affects you, this video is gonna be super helpful and super informative. So let's go and get started. Namaskar, this is DR Bhattacharya ENT and I am Dr. Diptarka Bhattacharya. Today, we're talking about tonsillitis. And specifically, we're talking about tonsillitis in the adults. That means people who are above 18 years of age. So let's talk about the tonsils. As you can see, the tonsils are paired tissues that sit in the back of your throat. And what do they actually do? Well, for children, when you're eating food, small particles of food get stuck inside the tonsils. And your tonsils have tissues that teach other cells in the body what bacteria you have in that food or in that saliva. And that is how you learn to fight infections. Which is why people in India can get by with a lot of stuff and our immunity is so strong because we are exposed to a lot more of bacteria as we are growing up. So what happens to the tonsils as we grow up? Well after the age of 18, these tonsils slowly get replaced with scar tissue. And as it gets replaced with scar tissues, the tonsils become tiny and small, which is why adults usually don't have big tonsils. Now when I see adults who come into my clinic with tonsil problems, there's usually one of two things that's happening. One is they get bad sore throats and it swells up and they get a lot of difficulty in swallowing, uh, speaking, sometimes breathing. And that's one group of people. And the other group are guys who get small white stuff that gets stuck in the tonsils and gets annoying and it keeps irritating them when they're eating until eventually it comes out. So these are two different groups. One of them is acute tonsillitis, one of them is chronic follicular tonsillitis, and the treatment for both of them is completely different. So let's get into it. Let's talk about each of these groups and how to treat them. The first group is gonna be the guy who gets acute tonsillitis. So if someone gets acute tonsillitis as an adult, are we talking about removing the tonsil? Not at all. There's a few specific reasons to remove the tonsils. Remember, your tonsils can get inflamed as a part of a general pharynx infection. So if you have an upper airway and food pipe infection, you can get inflammation of the tonsils and that's absolutely fine. However, sometimes people can have small bacteria that are sitting inside the tonsils and these bacteria can grow and they can cause infections. How do we know that? Well, we know that usually if you've formed an abscess in your tonsils. Now, these abscesses in the tonsils are identified on the CAT scan and if we see someone who has got a tonsil abscess, then that is an absolute indication for going ahead and removing the tonsil later on. The reason is because once you're forming abscess in the tonsil, that abscess can spread outside the tonsil and once it spreads outside the tonsil into the neck, it can spread all through the neck. And those are very, very dangerous infections because those infections can go down to the chest. They can affect all the vessels which carry blood to the brain and they can cause a lot of other complications in a similar vein. So once somebody gets an abscess in a tonsil, we always give them the choice for doing a tonsillectomy. Suppose you don't get an abscess, at which point is it worth removing the tonsils? Well, usually our guidelines say that if that person is having a significant difficulty carrying on his daily life, and if it's causing him to miss days at work, to a point where it seems worthwhile to do a surgery, that's the only indication to go ahead and do a tonsillectomy in somebody without an abscess. This means that uh, it can be different from different people. Now suppose you're a high achieving individual. For you, missing two weeks at work can involve a loss of a lot of money. And for you, it may be worthwhile to go ahead and take the tonsils out. If you're somebody who's mostly at home and it's not affecting you too much, 
then your threshold for getting a surgery may be much higher. To sum up, these situations are individual, so there's no one-size-fits-all approach. So depending on what your situation is, how much it affects you, how much it bothers you, and how much of your life is getting impacted by it, we need to take an individual decision whether to go ahead and remove the tonsils. Now let's talk about the second group of people. Now this second group of people are the people who get white stuff that gets stuck in their tonsils and it annoys them and it smells bad and then eventually they either cough it out or it goes away but it comes back. Now the reason this happens is totally different. What happens in this situation is that for some reason the scarring in the tonsil that happens has happened ununiformly. So there's one part that is scarred and there's one part that is not scarred. As a result of which, they're left with huge holes inside the tonsils. These are called mega crypts. Because you're left with huge holes inside the tonsils, big particles of food get stuck in there. Now, as a child, these are small particles of food which can get washed out by your spit. But huge chunks of food cannot get washed out by a spit. And you get bacteria growing inside those food particles and that's what causes that white concretion that we see. In this situation, surgery is always the last, last, last resort. The first thing to do in these situations is to use gargling and mouthwashes to keep washing those crypts. The second thing to do is to use something called a water pick, which is basically a toothbrush or something that creates a jet of water and use it to wash the tonsils every night. If I'm seeing 200 people with this kind of an issue, I'm probably going ahead and operating on one person. 199 people, that means 99.5 person people, can be treated with just this change to their lifestyle and they can lead absolutely normal life. Now, suppose we end up at a situation as an adult where we have to do a tonsillectomy. What are the ways to do a tonsillectomy? Now remember, in the old days, we used to remove tonsils using a knife, which is something that we don't do a lot of, but we don't remove tonsil in adults using knives or cauteries because that produces a lot of pain and your tonsils are already fairly scarred. So we need to make a lot of heat and a lot of cutting to remove tonsils, which leads to a lot of pain. In adults, when we're doing tonsillectomies, the most preferred approach, at least for me, is to do something called a cobulator intracapsular tonsillectomy by which we mean that we use a special tool called the cobulator which can eat up all the tonsil without burning it less burning less scarring less pain also intracapsular means we leave the capsule of the tonsil which is outside the tonsils on the throat anytime we remove the tonsil you're leaving exposed muscle which is very raw, very sensitive, very painful. If we leave the capsule behind, that can protect the muscle and that reduces pain by a significant amount. So if you're doing these tonsils, usually we're using a cobulator intracapsular tonsillectomy. Some situations where we are dealing with follicular tonsillitis, we are even using a cobulator to do a intracapsular tonsillectomy leaving a little bit of the capsular tonsil behind and that's because in your situation most of your problems start at the mucosal surface so leaving behind a little bit of the capsule allows us to prevent pain and faster recovery while getting absolutely perfect cures there are many other things that we can use in specific situations like cryotonsillectomies and laser tonsillectomies but there's specific cases and specific uses so to sum up Tonsillectomies in adults are something that need to be clearly addressed and we have to follow clear guidelines. Remember, adult tonsils are more scarred, which means they're usually more painful. So standard tonsillectomy techniques are very unsatisfactory to the patient and to the doctor. So we use special tools and special methods to make sure that this is a pain-free, quick recovery from the surgery. Once you're done with tonsillectomy, even with our advanced techniques, you still are going to have a bad sore throat for at least three to four days. And your doctor needs to clearly discuss this with you. You need to be on soft diet and you need to be drinking enough water, even if it is not super fun to do that. Because remember, the more you drink, the more you eat, the quicker you're going to recover. Uh, if 
this is something that is affecting you, go into your ENT doctor. They'll be able to discuss with you whether you're a candidate for the surgery, um, for any in-clinic procedure or just medicines. If you would like to read about this or know more about it, you can go to our website, which is in the link below and you can get all the information. Uh, if you would like to discuss this more in detail, please visit us at any of our physical locations so we can talk about this more. Um, please like, follow, subscribe, uh, click the bell icon so that I can keep you updated. Um, have a great day. I hope this talk was informative for you. Um, till I come back with a new video, take care. This is Dr. Bhattacharya.